Gamers can excuse a lot when it comes to playing video games, but there's a few key things that developers must get right. Otherwise, it's impossible to take their game seriously. And nothing makes a game seem so jank, so laughably unimmersive than having robotic, fucking perverted, and just downright absurd non-playable characters. Internet Cafe 2 Simulator is a tycoon game about starting an internet gaming cafe, racking up cash, committing assault on random civilians, stomping your company's competition by ordering hits on them, and paying for strippers who lack the mental capacity to blink. The NPCs in Internet Cafe 2 make Bethesda NPCs seem like sophisticated, highly intelligent scholars. I hate books. These are simple individuals who endlessly walk around town, sprint through the streets, and work out in the open. They do these activities to fuel themselves because they're not trying to be fleshed out characters with wants and needs. These are skinwalkers looking to consume with no remorse. Yeah, yeah. They constantly eat, they shit, sometimes even in the bathroom sink, and they always spend money. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They do not sleep, they only live to walk around vendors, leaving bad reviews in poor English. Nothing can stop them. Not you, not others, not even solid objects. That being said, among these anthropomorphic creatures disguised as human beings are a few zany characters that stand out. The beggar is the most important one, giving you quests with a $200 payout display despite being homeless and unemployed. His missions are really helpful because they progress you through the game. Through him, you can start mining Bitcoin, finding out how to purchase extra bats, and even learn how to spy on your competitors. On the second floor of your apartment, your rival is doing great in his business and is actively sabotaging yours to get ahead. So naturally, in the fourth mission of the game, the beggar asks you for $1,400 so he can fill your rival and his innocent customers with shrapnel. Oh my god, he fucking killed everyone. Squid Game Terrorist is a fucking nuisance. His objective is to cripple your cafe, and he attempts this by kamikazing into your PC setups. <laughs> video game characters like this that really make you wonder what are their motivations you know what is the psychology behind a strange man donning a jumpsuit and a mask strapping a bomb to his chest and blowing up two computers at a local cafe I don't know about you but just like everything I blame the furries funny enough despite the big explosion going off inside of my business you know nothing really happens if we check the aftermath of the scene initially it, it looks bad it looks bad but you'll notice not only does the blue terrorist immediately respawn with no physical repercussions. In fact, he's so ecstatic, he's just he's just waiting to strike again. But the computers, they don't really break, they just get disorganized. I mean, sure, you have to set up the rig again, and that's kind of annoying, but, you know, this whole suicide bombing thing, it really just gets a lot of bad press. Nothing really happens. He's just blowing himself up to minorly inconvenience you. If anything, this guy's just like your crazy, chaotic friend who, like, you know, kills himself. <laughs> Anyway, I think the thief is... <coughs> Anyway, the thief is, in my opinion, the real threat. This guy will attempt what we gamers call a Skyrim sneak. It's where you're so socially inept, so unintelligent, so fucking idiotic that you think crouching in front of a crowd of people isn't the most suspicious thing you can ever do. Now, when the thief reaches one of your PC setups, and I'm talking about the times where he isn't immediately knocked out or beaten to death, he'll actually grab a PC part and run away with them. You have to chase him down to retrieve your item and you actually can lose it for the whole game unlike other characters both of these criminals can go down with just one punch this is so the player can easily prevent them from ruining their business the thing is these characters have one hit point even when they aren't messing with you allowing you to just knock them out cold when simply walking down the street it's actually pretty fun i like doing it I'm going to start doing this in real life. I'm going to start knocking out random people on the street and see what happens. Everyone knows a police officer's job is to protect and serve. Protect and serve. Good pizza, that is. <laughs> Fire her. Video game cops range from being outstanding, oh, yes, virtuous figures you fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you to shooting minorities on sight, and the cop in Internet Cafe 2 Simulator sits right in the very middle. 
Morally speaking, I'll give him a true neutral because he, honest to God, doesn't give a dog clipping shit about anything, especially upholding the law. He is incredibly incompetent at his job, impressively so. I'm on stage and he can't even get to me. Look at the way he's walking. He won't bat an eye to thievery. Hell, if you assault someone, he almost always has nothing to say about it. He does nothing to prevent literal terrorist attacks, both from Blue's Clues and even myself. Seriously, these people stay dead in the apartment complex for the rest of the game. The cop does less than the bare minimum. He searches you and writes you tickets, making that stupid fucking face like he doesn't want to be there. Man, you came up to me. There are dogs clipping through fences right now, and you're chasing me into my apartment? What the fuck? The club, which has an $100 entry fee every day, is home to a bunch of mindless degenerates and strippers that dance to copyright free tunes without a thought behind their eyes. You're able to purchase a dance with one of the strippers, who you then follow to the back room, sit on the couch, and watch as she attempts to entertain you in the most PG way possible. I'm confused. What is the price tag for this fucking social distancing lap dance? $100? Am I paying $100 to see what I could be seeing on stage? Just in the fucking back room? I'm not gonna lie though, she's really talented, but I don't know what's more impressive. Her moves or the staring contest she's having with the wall? It's kind of unsettling, but not as unsettling as dancing with the black stripper. Not a race thing, because when she dances, her head starts to compulsively ship shaped into different sizes. Last time I checked, God didn't program this feature into black women, but this feature remains exclusive to this character. So if you're looking to add a little bit more spice into the worst lap dance in video game history, Pick the black money stripper. In Internet Cafe 2, you open an Internet Cafe with the name of your choice. Naturally, I decided to name my first shop after myself, Mr. Fetus Cafe. In the cafe, you start off with a computer and then order a simple setup, build the rig, and then rent it out to customers in exchange for cash. When that's done, you go on Zamazor and purchase high quality PCs, which are called computer cases, implying that you're not even buying the computer parts just the case for $1,400. You purchase different types of game consoles and set them up in your store for more renting. That being said, even when business is booming, your customers will frequently try to fuck you. Besides arcade machines, which charge customers instantly, the system for charging customers who are renting PCs and game consoles is charging dollars by the second, with the end price being nowhere even close to realistically fair or sustainable both for the customer or your business, but aside from that, the customers do not pay this fee until before they leave the store. As a result, most of the time, they'll choose to opt out of paying entirely as they head for the exit, forcing you to have to chase them onto the street and get into fist fights with them. The customers hit slow, but hard. And the game will randomly decide if your melee attack does damage or not, sometimes kindly showing you that the enemy blocked your punch, other times having them take no damage for seemingly no fucking reason at all. If they kill you, you respawn at your store and you don't get the money back. Luckily, the game gives us strategies on how to deal with its own shitty combat. The cheapest strategy is to purchase a bat and beat your customers to death for your money back, which, by the way, you murdering them this way is actually pretty admirable as you only take back the money that you're owed. The other strategy is hiring employees. On the computer are several apps you can download to expand your business, whether it's the ability to play five copyright free tunes in the lobby, purchasing video game rights for your consoles, look at this guy playing Among Us, virus protection for all the computers in your network, or even hiring help to run your store. These employees consist of the chef, who cooks meals that customers can order, the mascot, a furry little shit who attracts customers into your shop, and the bouncer, who will fucking drop anyone who tries to steal from you. Welcome. The cleaner is also a thing. He's a device which zips around your store cleaning anything and everything and is apparently on the payroll like everyone else. The maid is an attractive woman whose literal job description is to look hot, which I'm not really sure is legal, while also taking orders from people. Or like food orders, it's not, there's, there's no like misogyny. The guard, a masked individual who camps the corner of your store and murders anyone trying to kamikaze into your store. After you purchase this guy, the days of equipment randomly blowing up are over and are instead replaced with infrequent sounds of someone getting gunned down in the street. 
which everyone including the cop blissfully ignores funny enough the bouncer also has his effect for any sorry individual who tries to steal your money Internet Cafe 2 is a fun, albeit broken game. I mean, right off the bat, you can tell something is wrong with the general population. But indie game limitations aside, its most unforgivable flaw is that it's a bad tycoon game. I feel like with so many tycoon games, as your business starts to become successful, the game starts to progress with you. You're introduced to a lot more perks and ways of generating income, but you're also faced with a lot more nuanced problems as well. It's a balancing act, and part of what makes these games so intense is making that one mistake that can make you go under. In Internet Cafe 2, too, you cannot lose and it's the game's biggest issue usually with tycoon games when the player cannot make ends meet their business fails and it's game over but in internet cafe 2 there is no way to go negative there's no real way for your shop to shut down it's impossible to lose the game bottom line as long as you plan a pc down or do anything you generate income but with no real difficulty or way of losing everything you worked for it just becomes incredibly stale because there are no stakes suddenly all the game's milestones just become inevitable perks that you're going to acquire. And once you've sucked the game out of all its content, Internet Cafe 2 just kind of ends abruptly. <laughs> 